News 3 and the Eyewitness News Team with Kara Hansen and Jim Daniels, Tommy Sims with sports, and Leif Palmer with your News 3 AccuWeather. Good evening, this is Kara Hansen from the Channel 3 Newsroom and we bring you our lead story as it unfolds. Our Crime Watch reporter Rick Lowen is live on the scene of an apparent armed robbery about which authorities are only just now releasing details. Rick, can you tell us the latest? We're coming to you live from Bayside. We're at a junior market. There's been an attempted armed robbery, Kira. Not clear at this time is what will happen to the would-be gunman and the mysterious stranger who intervened. The store clerk is calling the Good Samaritan a hero. Police are asking him to submit himself voluntarily for questioning at this time. For Eyewitness News, this is Rick Lowen. Back to you, Kira. I'm sorry to keep you waiting, Miss Kudenko, but you said before that's when you fell behind the counter? Yes. And um, how many more shots did you say you heard? I don't know, two or three at first, before the last ones. The last ones? A bunch of them, just, just one after another. From the same shooter, the same gun? I don't know, but I think so. My ex-husband made me go to a shooting range once. <laughs> Said I should know how to fire a gun. Um, I think the gun the man had was a revolver, and he just kept reloading it and firing it and reloading it and firing it, and he was screaming. Who was he screaming and shooting at? The other man. The homeless man. Was the homeless man shot? Was he hurt? I, I don't know. I couldn't see. I was behind the counter. But after the shot stopped, I could hear the clicking of the gun as the robber just kept pulling the trigger over and over again. I looked out and I could, I could see the homeless man standing over the man with a gun. His back was to me, shoulders broad, almost completely in shadow. Before the light. So the homeless man wasn't shot, he wasn't hurt? No, I don't think so. And you said the shooter was standing how close to him when he shot him? Maybe six feet or less. You're safe now, Miss Grudenko. Everything's gonna be all right. I just need you to stay here for a little while. You finished with the woman? Almost. What'd the clerk have to say? Oh, that's weird. I'm not sure if he's freaked out or just making it up. Yeah, tell me about it. He says he was ringing up the woman when the shooter came in, right? He watches him go to the back of the store and has a funny feeling because he's been robbed once this year already. The shooter comes to the counter, he comes out of his pocket with the gun. Then he says, our homeless guy catches the gunman's attention and draws his aim. It's strange, says the clerk, because the homeless guy had been standing around in the store almost like, like he was waiting for something. <laughs> says the clerk, no more than 10, 12 feet away. And that's why the clerk hits the deck. Not just because of the shots, but he says, even though the shooter looks hopped up on God knows what, 
He's aiming right at the homeless guy, and he misses. Doesn't even slow the homeless guy down. Yeah, I got that too. The lady says the first shot's missed, but where'd they go? That's the thing, isn't it? Yes. The clerk says that the shots should have busted out the glass windows or door to the store, but they didn't. The paramedics checked out the homeless guy on the scene. No extra holes in him, no slugs. So where's the slugs? You want to hear more? Yeah. Lab guys finished and said they found the weapon. 38 revolver, six shot, and then he reloads. You know how many slugs they found on the scene? Hmm. Two. Two. One in a can of tomato soup, and the other stuck in a ceiling tile, probably a ricochet. Now, of the other 10 shots, most of which, according to the clerk, were fired right at the homeless guy at near point blank range. Victor, how are you? Can I get you anything? No, thank you. Okay. You know, that's all I have for you, is Victor. I mean, I don't, I don't have a name listed here, last name. I didn't offer one. You know, you're not gonna get in trouble for giving us your last name. I mean, what we're trying to do here is just get a better idea of what happened during the robbery. I appreciate your assurance. I did not fear reprisal. So, uh, I don't have an address for you either. Are you homeless, Victor? No. So, where do you live? Downtown, west side? Yes. Which is it? Both. I'd like to ask you a few questions about the robbery. That will be acceptable. First off, wow. <laughs> That's pretty brave of you to jump in like that and help everybody. Most people would have just tried to protect themselves. Most people. There may be more variation than you imagine, Detective. So, why did you help? The man with the weapon was a danger, a threat. But why didn't you just hit the deck and cover your head? How would the result have been achieved if I had hit the deck? So how did you stop it, the shooter? I did not. I provided an outlet for his fury to be vented, so once expended, he would see the futility of his rage. What is that, some sort of kung fu thing? Some sun tzu thing? No. It says here that the, uh, the clerk saw you in the store for about five minutes before the robbery happened. You didn't purchase anything. You seem to be waiting for something or someone. someone. Yes, Victor. Were you waiting for someone? Yes. Okay. And was it the, uh, the armed man? Yes. So how did you two know each other? No, we did not. But you were waiting for him? Yes. You were waiting for a man that you didn't know? No, I knew him. But you said you didn't. No, I did not. You asked how the man and I had known each other, and I replied we had not. So, uh, you were waiting for a man that you knew, but he didn't know you. Correct. Victor, I'm gonna need to get some answers here. Detective Ramsey, it is my understanding that is what I am here for. I've answered your questions with utter truth and clarity. So, what were you meeting for? It had been arranged. And when did you decide that the robbery had gone wrong? 
I did not make such a decision. But you fought with the man. Why? When you started shooting, was that not part of the plan or something? No, I knew there would be a shooting. Victor, I'm getting tired. It has been a very long day for you, Detective. What happened when the robbery went wrong? Why did you turn on your buddy? Because he started shooting people and suddenly you had a concern for the people in the store? No, it was my concern for one of them that brought me there. One of them? Yes. Of course, I had intended to keep the others from harm as well. That is not always possible, but in this situation, I found the goals to be mutually obtainable. Victor, are you a user? Are you referring to mind-altering substances, Detective? Yes, I am. <laughs> no, I'm not. Well, then you're going to have to do a better job of explaining this robbery. Because what you've told me up to this point isn't making any sense. Detective Ramsey, you say you seek understanding, but you ask questions aimed at creating a pathway toward preconceived supposition. That is not understanding. If you desire to know, you must learn to listen and perhaps accept. Accept. Accept that the truth may not be what you wanted it to be. Why didn't the bullets harm you, Victor? The shooter was close enough to you so that he wouldn't miss. Yes, he could not have missed. But you didn't get shot, Victor. Why? Why, Victor? I cannot say, Detective. You can't say what? You're going to tell me, and you're going to tell me now. It is my understanding that I'm accusing the crime, Detective. Therefore, my presence here is voluntary. Voluntary shit. You tell me how you didn't get shot, Victor. You tell me how you and your friend worked it out. You tell me now before I put you in the lockup. Detective. I know it can be difficult to want to understand, yet be unable to do so. I wish I could tell you more. I'd hope my coming here would help, but I fear that I may cause more confusion, so I must go. But you can. Detective? Detective? Oh, hi, Pam. Can I help you? Yeah, yeah. Do you have a George Watson yeah. down here? Yeah, 141. So has the doctor made a diagnosis? No, they're still running tests. What sort of tests? All of them, I think. Well, am I going to be able to get a statement out of them tonight? <laughs> well, not unless you talk in whistles and whirs. He hasn't spoken since shortly after he was admitted. He just makes these odd sounds. You know, kind of like a cross between a dolphin and baby talk. It's the strangest thing you've ever heard. He does draw, though. What's he draw? The same thing, over and over. A man in a dark suit and bright eyes. These strange, bright eyes. Creepy. That's why we gave him the sedative. You said he hasn't spoken since he got here. What did he say when he got here? He kept saying, it wasn't a man. It wasn't a man, over and over. 
I, uh, I, uh, I, I don't really need to see him tonight. Um, I, uh, I'll come back tomorrow. You sure? Yeah. Yeah. What we're trying to do here is just get a better idea of what happened in the room. You tell me how you didn't get shot, Victor. His back was to me. His shoulders broad and completely in shadow. I can't see him. He's not so He's aiming. I don't know this guy. So, where did this is? Where are you? Downtown? West Side? Bright yes. eyes. These strange and bright eyes. You tell me how you didn't get shot, Victor. He's being sad and true. Waiting. Strange bright eyes. No, it was my concern for one of them that brought me there. I didn't the bullets were. He kept saying it wasn't a man. It's so untruth may not be what you wanted it to be.